Let's thank Matt Corcoran on the bagpipes. Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Melinda Stevens. As Provost of Geneva College, it's my privilege to welcome you to this 2023 commencement ceremony. Graduates, I'm sure there have been moments when you felt like this day would never arrive, but it's here. Now, there are actually three groups of graduates participating in this ceremony today, and I'd like to recognize each one of those groups at this time. So if you are a student receiving an associate or bachelor's degree at Geneva's Pittsburgh campus at the Center for Urban Biblical Ministries, would you please stand? Let's congratulate the students. You can be seated. If you are a student that completed a bachelor's degree through our online degree programs, would you please stand? Congratulations, you may be seated. Finally, if you are receiving a graduate degree this afternoon, would you please stand? Congratulations, you may be seated. At this time, I would la ask all the friends and family members present today to stand. To all of you friends and family, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude for your faith in Geneva and for the care and support that you have provided to these graduates as they completed their degree. Graduates, would you please thank these individuals for their support to you over the years. Thank you, you may be seated. At this time, I'd like to recognize the faculty of the college, uh, so would you please stand? Graduates, these individuals collectively represent the, um, the faculty of the college. It is through their excellent work and their faithful service to Christ that you experienced a quality academic program rooted in biblical truth that will prepare you for a lifelong mission wherever and whenever you are called. Graduates, these individuals have impacted you directly through their work with you, whether that be online or in the classroom. They have taught you, they have mentored you, occasionally they have tormented you. They've challenged you, but most importantly, they have cared for you in class and out of class while you've been a Geneva College student. Would you thank them for their work and service to God and to you in this place? Please be seated. Finally, I would like to introduce five of the people taking part in the program today. Uh, another will be introduced later in the program. Mrs. Helen Jackson, seated over to my right, is the director of the Center for Urban Biblical Ministry, and she will be opening our time in prayer. Mrs. Lindsay Corteau, seated to my left, uh, director of marketing and public relations, will introduce our speaker. Dr. Calvin Traup, president of Geneva College, will officially declare you to be graduates of the college and give a charge to the graduates. Dr. Gordy Richards, at my far right, associate professor of computer science, will give the commencement prayer and blessing of the graduates. And Mr. Bill Stark, who's seated, I think, somewhere over there, <laughs> the college registrar, will join us on stage during the program to assist the president in greeting and congratulating each student. So at this time, Mrs. Jackson, would you please draw a heart to the Lord today? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come this afternoon to ask you to bless these graduates and fill them with your spirit and with your love. We pray that as they go forth to work in your kingdom here on earth, may they remember you in all the things that they endeavor to do, and all people need to hear your gospel. Allow them to share the fruit of their knowledge from the core values they received here at Geneva College. Dear God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone. May they find comfort from our community's continued embrace 
and support them as they journey through life. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. First, let me say congratulations to the graduates. This is so exciting. You guys start on your next chapter of life here. I have the privilege and honor of introducing today's adult and graduate con commencement speaker, Mrs. Bethany Williams. Bethany is a true friend to Geneva College and a passionate advocate for the city of Beaver Falls. As a 2012 graduate of Geneva College, Bethany quickly began to pursue her passion for community development, taking on a role as administrative assistant for the city of Beaver Falls. Bethany's drive and determination to improve the city, our community, and the county as a whole quickly led to her moving into the role of founding director of the Department of Community Development for the city of Beaver Falls. Serving in that role for nearly eight years, Bethany worked closely with city council, county and state officials, community organizations, and more to create actionable steps to improve the city of Beaver Falls and help municipalities like Beaver Falls take steps towards greater economic improvement. I've had the pleasure of collaborating with Bethany over on various projects in the county. I think we've joked that there's a good chance if there's a board serving the whole county of Beaver, either Bethany or I serve on it. But in my role here at Geneva and in my role serving throughout the county, if I'm engaged in an issue or in an idea on community, community development, policy for our small towns, or improving the impact our county can have regionally, I hope that the seat next to me is filled with Bethany Williams. Bethany leads with passion and her heart for the Lord and the work he can do in our communities carries through on all projects she is involved in. Currently, Bethany serves as the local government policy specialist in the Governor's Center for Local Government. It was Bethany's shared experiences and abilities to connect municipalities and agencies to not just have passive meetings, but to create meaningful relationships and elicit change that led her to this role. Bethany makes her home here in Beaver Falls with her husband and two sons. And in addition to her full-time work that I've already mentioned, Bethany's servant heart continues to seek ways to help all those around her through nonprofit work, including starting the Judah Strong Foundation in honor of her precious son, Judah, who lives with the lifelong impacts of cerebral palsy. This foundation seeks to help reduce the barriers that families face when looking for physical and occupational therapies that they need most. Please join me in welcoming Geneva's friend and mine, Mrs. Bethany Williams. Thank you, Lindsay. Well, <laughs> what a way to start. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, isn't it? I want to welcome you to Beaver Falls as a proud resident of the city and alumna of Geneva College. It is such an honor for this community to host this celebration every year, to celebrate the accomplishments that you've made and the impact that you've had while you've been on our campus. And it is my honor to have the opportunity to speak to you on such a momentous occasion. As I look out across the sea of faces in front of me, with anticipation and excitement, it feels appropriate to start by sharing my favorite word with you. Sonder, a noun. The realization that each passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. This word isn't a real word, but it's invented by author John Koenig, and it's in added to his Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, a book of words that he says doesn't exist, but the world needs. Now, if you'd, if you'd humor me for a moment, I'd like to co-opt it for my own purposes today and invite you to feel a sense of sonder with me. Take a moment to think about your own experiences in life. You were created by God in his image with your own fingerprints and DNA that, and have been guided through life from infancy to childhood to adulthood along only a path that you could have walked. You experience your own educational journey, your own career path, your own social life, and your own family life. Your faith and personal development have had their own ebbs and flows. Each intricate journey that you have walked has woven together and is colored by every challenge and success that you have faced. It ultimately forms a tapestry of experiences from which your worldview was developed. Your passions emerged, your talents were discovered, and decisions were made. Decisions that brought us all here today. Now think for a moment about everyone else sitting here. Think of your fellow graduates who have each had their own unique journeys in life that have led them to this day as well. 
Each person has had their own experiences that influence their views and understanding of the material that may have been taught to both of you, but will lead them down to their own future. And think of the staff full of individual people who have also had their own stories that contribute to how they serve the students here at Geneva College, and the faculty with their own career experiences that formed the insights that they passed on to you. And even broader, think of all the family members and friends who are in attendance today here as well, having their own unique stories, who have provided all the support and guidance that you have needed to make it this far. This is a crowd of individuals, with each person's life as vivid and complex as your own. Created by God to reflect his image with their unique gifts, callings, passions, and stories. You see, the beauty of graduation ceremonies is that they are deeply personal and collectively meaningful, just in the same way that we experience Sonder together. What a testament to God's grace that we could even share this moment of celebration together today. Because the first step in becoming a neighbor is getting to know someone, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Lindsay did a good job of covering my story, but I do live here as a resident of Beaver Falls. I'm also a pastor's kid who grew up in the church and spent a lot of time looking at the kinds of people that people find valuable. And so, um, you know, as, as I was a pastor's kid, I learned that the quickest path to accept acceptance was to be well-behaved in a public setting and to go into full-time ministry because those were the people that everyone seemed to think highly of. I'm sure this is where my dad might disagree, <laughs> but this, it was what made, me, what made sense to me as a child raised in the church. I turned my path in life towards his positions as a people pleaser might and landed at Geneva as a, as a ministry major. I, summer, I spent my summers on missions trips and did my internships in churches, trying to become a version of myself that I thought everyone would see value in. And as I neared my own graduation, I had a fully formed idea of how my career would be fully dedicated to God and everyone might take notice. So how do you convince people of your great Christianhood at graduation? Take a job in government, of course. <laughs> I stumbled into a job working for the city of Beaver Falls, and before taking my uh, position with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, worked in countywide positions as well. I was given the opportunity to meet my neighbors and find solutions to the issues that they were facing. I was given the opportunity to work with city council to make decisions that improve the quality of life in our community, and to plan amazing projects like the new park that just opened last week next to the library. I got the rare op opportunity to wake up every day and think about how to best love my neighbors as a career. But because I cared deeply about what others might think of me, I needed to find a way to explain this sudden career change and career goals to the people who had maybe known me since childhood mostly because government and the church aren't used positively in the same sentence together. Over time, I began answering the question of what I did for a living by saying that I was a professional neighbor. It worked because it summarized my professional role as I woke up every day working with and for my neighbors in the city, but it was also a phrase that helped me reconcile that this job could be ministry. My understanding of ministry in the past was that it was a career, a decision to leave everything behind and go where God leads you with nothing but a Bible and maybe some fundraised dollars to get you there. But as I've lived life along my alongside my neighbors here in Beaver Falls in a job that I wasn't sure I should want, I found that missionaries are just neighbors who are called to live life alongside people in far off neighborhoods. And calling all boiled down to this, I was called to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love my neighbors as myself, in whatever context he calls me to do so. Over the last decade of my career, I realized a professional neighborhood is not a unique calling to me and not even to people in, in Christians in government. In fact, every Christian professional that I've met throughout my career carries that same calling, and so do you. Whichever career path you are on, your gifts and talents are needed at this point in history for a specific purpose, in work, at home, in church, and in your community. And you are called to live a life of sonder and empathy, understanding that every person you encounter is just as created by God as you are. Now, as I think about purpose, I, I'm reminded of my least favorite verse in the Bible. I know that's not what you typically hear from people at a stage is talking about their least favorite verse, but in truth and in all honesty, I carry a fair amount of resentment towards Jeremiah 29 11. Mostly because of the way that people you don't know very well use it as a platitude to smooth over life's greatest challenges. And I don't think I'm alone in saying that I've heard it at every milestone and at every low point in my life. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. 
These warm and fuzzy words work really well on a Hallmark card, but they really hurt when life falls apart or tragedy hits. For me, these verses have, have felt like salt in a wound five years ago uh, when I experienced a traumatic childbirth and our youngest son was born with irreparable brain damage. And these words have continued to feel isolating when we land in countless hospital stays and face unexpected illnesses. And they make me feel invisible when we suffer in a way that very few people understand. Even when spoken with the best intentions, I'm not always sure that these, these words really feel like God's plans have prosperity in them at all. But over time, I, I've realized that it isn't for lack of truth in these words, but that these words are taken out of context more often than not. And because scripture never returns void, I'd like to redeem these verses for my sake, for anyone else who's felt maybe personally victimized by these words in the past, or for anyone who's about to receive a beautiful card with these words written across the front. Starting in verse four, this is what the Lord God Almighty says, says to all those who I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. The calling here is to lead what sounds like a pretty ordinary life. Build a home, plant gardens, marry, have kids, marry off your kids, and seek the prosperity of the city in which you live. God called his people to build neighborhoods and live ordinary lives while facing all of the hardships that come along with living in exile. You see, the twist in all of this comes in verse 8 when God tells them that he's not going to rescue them for 70 years. That means an entire generation of people might not see that rescue. And only after seven decades of hardship and waiting does God say, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to you to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. This is the calling of professional neighborhood. No matter where the Lord leaves your life from this point forward, seek the Lord with all your heart and live intentionally where you are placed. Whether you are sitting in a boardroom or bedside in a hospital room, the, call, the calling is the same. Nowhere in these verses does God say that life is going to be easy. In fact, he says that even while you're in exile, even while in the place that you least want to be, seek him and build a life there. I want to go one step further and challenge you to be satisfied with a life like this, knowing that everything that you do for the glory of God and for the good of your neighbor brings you closer to him. So go forth and build businesses, schools, and organizations, and build them with wisdom and grace. Invest in your family and be present. Wherever you land, live well among your neighbors and share your gifts and talents in ways that best loves them like Jesus does. Rest in God's promises to be with you through it all. I'm convinced that the greatest display of God's love and creativity on this side of heaven is the fact that somehow a large group of individuals, each with their own skills, gifts, mindsets, and life experiences, come together to build bridges, businesses, hospitals, and schools, technology, social services, and art governments, neighborhoods, and churches. Each one of those things is beautifully unique because of the long line of people who chose to spend their lives making an I- a visible impact in those places. Talk about a moment for Sonder. As I close here today, I wanna to tell all of you thank you for the, in advance for the impact you are about to make in society, the same way that you have made an impact here in Beaver Falls over the last several, re- several years. Be hopeful about your future knowing that whatever God's plans he has for you, from here on out, have the potential to draw you closer to life, closer to him. And that is the whole purpose of life. I encourage you to keep your calling simple as you move on from this point. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do, your presence will make the world a better place. And not only will you prosper, but your city will too. Congratulations on all of your accomplishments, and God be with you. Thank you.
Thank you, Bethany, for those good words and for reminding us about the impact of a little more of Jeremiah than just one verse. Today, we honor our commencement speaker, Bethany Williams, with an honorary doctoral degree, the Doctor of Public Service. At Geneva College, we confer such honorary degrees to recognize persons who have become distinguished in following Christ in their respective callings, bringing glory to God and honoring the name of Christ through their faithful and fruitful service in the world. Recipients of the honorary doctorate point us toward Christ and encourage us to devote ourselves to him, responding faithfully to his word in every aspect of thought and life. The program provides a summary of Mrs. Williams' faithful work as a leader in community development not only in the city of Beaver Falls, but in southwestern Pennsylvania and the Commonwealth. Mrs. Williams, by vote of the Geneva College Board of Trustees and by the authority granted by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Geneva College hereby confers upon you, Bethany Williams, the Doctor of Public Service, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges that pertain thereunto. Congratulations. I'd like to recognize several groups of graduates at this time. First, I'd like to recognize students that have earned their bachelor's degree with academic honors. These graduates have completed a minimum of 60 hours at Geneva. First are students that are graduating cum laude. They have attained a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.4. These students are wearing white honors cords. Looking around. Oh, we do. If, you have, if you're wearing a white honors cord, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Congratulations. Our next group is graduating magna cum laude. They have achieved a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.6 and are wearing a mixed gold and white honors cord. Would you please stand? No magnet. I'm going to move on to SUMA. Okay, moving on to SUMA. The next group is graduating SUMA cum laude. They have achieved a cumulative grade point average of 3.8 or higher. These students are wearing a gold honors cord. Would you please stand and be recognized? Congratulations. You may be seated. So we are now at the point in the ceremony where we make this all official. This is called the conferring of the degrees. Um, and if I don't keep talking, you wouldn't have your degree. So I'm going to continue at this point. By the vote of the Geneva College Board of Trustees and by the authority granted by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Geneva College hereby confers their designated degrees on each student certified by the registrar to have successfully completed all graduation requirements with all the rights and privileges that pertain thereunto. Congratulations. I'm about to read the names of the approximately 48 of you who are participating in this ceremony. Uh, you should be aware, family members, that the graduates from the Center for Urban Biblical Ministry will be first, followed by the online degree programs, 
then finally by each of the graduate programs. And so while we get situated here uh, and move, move some folks around, I'm going to make a few announcements. And since you will probably be sitting for a little while longer, and the, I know from experience that those seats are not very comfortable, feel free to stand up uh, and stretch a bit as I read some announcements. We have a professional photographer taking a picture of each graduate. The proofs will be sent to you, and there's no obligation to purchase. For safety and to prevent obstructions, we ask that you not try to move around um, to get a better picture-taking vantage point. At this point, I'd also like to thank uh, the folks who really made this event possible. That's our registrar's office, physical plant staff, housekeeping staff, security, event staff, the faculty marshals, our ushers, our sound crew, Kathy Schlachter, many others. We have a wonderful staff who helped this event go smoothie. Would you please join me in thanking them for this event? <laughs> At this time, if you would um, be seated, I'm going to move to the microphone to read the names. Mr. President, I present to you the class of 2023. Christine Houston from Homestead, PA. She is receiving her BPS in Community Leadership. Kendra Lynn Jones from Pittsburgh, PA, is receiving her BPS in Community Leadership. <laughs> Joseph Aaron Campsey from Laramie, Wyoming, is receiving his associate's degree in Criminal Justice. Rebecca A. Salman is from Newcastle, PA, is receiving her BPS. <laughs> Breonna Lauren Street from Pittsburgh, PA, is receiving her BPS. Hannah Olivia Moore from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee is receiving her P BPS. <laughs> Jennifer Nicole Sims from Bloomingdale, Ohio is receiving her BPS. Tara Dawn Winters from Thompson Station, Tennessee is receiving her BPS. <laughs> Lydia Jane Gillum from Clinton Township, Michigan is receiving her BPS. Stephen Preston Sparks from Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania is receiving his BPS. <laughs> Joette Marie Carroll from Oakdale, Pennsylvania is receiving her BPS.
Sarah Michael Lippett from Freeport, Pennsylvania is receiving her BPS. Keisha A. Sheffy from Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania is receiving a BPS. <laughs> the following students are receiving their Master's in Counseling. Kimberly Denise Fairly from Braddock, Pennsylvania. Maria Rose, Maria Rose Sanceri from Greensburg, PA. Stephanie Michelle McCarthy from Irwin, PA. <laughs> Caitlin Christina Crow from Beaver, PA. Travis Lee Taft from New Brighton, Pennsylvania. Christopher J. McCown, Jr. from Beaver Falls, PA. Kimberly Kutu Fry from Beaver Falls, PA. Colleen Renee Oki from Mars, PA. <laughs> Demetrius Aspen Tsai from Clarksburg, Maryland. Gary Ball Pringle from Acme, Pennsylvania. <laughs> the 
The following students are receiving their master's in cybersecurity. Nicole Ann West from Glenwood, Maryland. Abigail E. Stephine from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Curtis Elliott Thomas from Streetsboro, Ohio. M. Softly from Marietta, Pennsylvania. Marcus Anthony Timus from Hayward, California. Ryan Anthony Zerger from Flanders, New Jersey. Robert Joseph DeGiulia from Palm City, Florida. following students are receiving their Masters of Education in School Counseling Certification. Victoria Marie Abondanza from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Cassidy Taylor Boots from Fombell, Pennsylvania. The following students are receiving their masters in higher education. <laughs> Abigail Logan Swisher from Cum Cuming? Cumming, Iowa. Margaret Lauren Hosick from Beaver, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Jessica Grace Lawson from Due West, South Carolina.
Drew Junyin from Nanjing, China. Simone Colquitt Freeman Irwin from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mark Allen Godwin from Beaver, Pennsylvania. Luke William Robertson from Westfield, New York. Levi Harrison Wynn Cole from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Joshua Michael Echo from Greencastle, Pennsylvania. The following students are receiving their MBA. Madison Lynn Smith from Joshua Tree, California. <laughs> Natalia Marie Muio from Coppel, Pennsylvania. Daniel R. Sovich from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Locke from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Abby Renee Laborde from Olanta, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Ethan James Houston from Ambridge, Pennsylvania.
The next student is receiving his Master's in Leadership Studies. William Lewis Daniel from Worthington, Pennsylvania. Let's congratulate the entire class of 2023. Congratulations to all of you, and uh, I have a, a word for you today. The first thing which, we, which is important for us as our custom is to remember that today is a day to celebrate. It's a day to celebrate. We know, uh, as we often say, Geneva is not a party school, but we are a feast school. And feasting is ordained by God, and it involves multiple generations and really good food and good things to drink and great fellowship and some time to just relax and enjoy what, what has been accomplished. So I want to make sure that you celebrate. Today is a great day to celebrate. And I, uh, I just want you to know that what happens in adult education and in graduate education is different and it's supposed to be. Uh, it's different um, not everyone has the same experience, but I remember the first semester. Uh, I had been out for six years, and the first semester, my first week of class, uh, I got my syllabus for my master's classes, and I went home. And it required a significant conversation with Mrs. Trout. And it led to one of the most difficult years that we had as a married couple not between us, but just managing that. We had two little children, a baby and a toddler, and we had, um, and I was working besides, as many of you uh, have been doing. And so the demands are different when you're an adult learner. The demands are different in how to get it done. But also, the level at which you're learning as an adult, regardless what program you're in, is different because you've lived in the world and you have experience, and you're coming at learning from a different perspective. And so we always like to think about um, the seal of the college and how that guides our lives, our hearts and our minds. It's a living seal. And so when we say pro Christo et patria, it means something. It's not just a slogan you know that it means that we're unequivocally for Christ in every dimension, every claim that he has on our lives. Um, and you heard Bethany talking about how difficult some of those claims are that he places on us. And all of us go through those things in various ways. And so I want you to think about this a little bit differently than what we would talk about with our traditional undergraduates. And I want you to think about what a adult degree and a graduate degree, one of the things it's supposed to do for us. There's a phrase in Isaiah chapter 50 that says that we're to hear as one who has been taught. To hear as one who has been taught. And if today you have completed an adult degree or if you have completed a master's, one of the things that's supposed to happen to us, having gone through that study, is not some kind of claim of expertise that goes along with our hood, but a, an ability to hear better. And specifically, an ability to hear better in the areas that we've studied. Now, all of us know people in our lives that have selective hearing or lack thereof. 
We're talking about a good thing here, though. We're talking about actually, actually hearing better, not, uh, not, not weeding things out that you don't want to hear. And so I just want to encourage you in that, because to be able to hear better requires that you be able to first and foremost see and hear the Lord Jesus Christ and be attentive to the open Bible at the center of the seal. You can't hear better if you're always stuck in a horizontal dimension without any reference to God because all there is is chaos and a constant din of things and it's not any better now than it was 10 years ago or 15 or 20 years. It hasn't improved, it's gotten worse. So you have to have the vertical dimension of pro Christo, loving God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And then to love our neighbor as ourself is where that extra skill in hearing needs to come in. God is equipping you and has equipped you through these programs within a framework of calling for service. And service starts with us putting ourselves in humble positions and hearing. And because we've been taught, we can hear better how we can serve people. And so when we think about for this group of people that is sitting before me right now, what does it mean to live pro Christo et patria, the love of Christ, love of neighbor, and the places that God puts us and will put us? What does it mean to do that with the open Bible? It means that we both need to be hearing the Lord and responding to him so that we can hear better the people that God is calling us to serve and serve them better. It's kind of simple, but as you add knowledge and as you add wisdom and the things that you've gained from your studies, it needs to make us better able to hear. The last thing I have for you this afternoon is just to remember that as alumni of Geneva College, Geneva College is always a home for you. You're always welcome here, and not just on homecoming when we have Orm's Donuts and a lot of other good food around. We're especially welcome when you have questions or when you've learned things that maybe other people aren't that interested in hearing about. We want to know. And I want to encourage you to maintain connections not only with your classmates and the friends that you made, but also with your professors. I can tell you that at pivotal moments in my life after I finished at Geneva, I consulted with professors that I got to know and trust who provided guidance many years after I graduated. And it's important when you're in professional situations to have some of those really capable people who know you and love you and can talk straight with you about where you are. And so please know that we'll never be anyone's first home, but we are a home uh, to you as alumni. We count on that as alums, and we want you to be part of that. So I'm so grateful for the work that you've done and the accomplishments that you've achieved, and we look forward to hearing about how God is using you for his purposes to serve him and his people in the future. I just have one last instruction before Dr. Richards closes us with prayer and we are dismissed. Um, following that prayer, you are all invited to a reception under the tent marked C, which is on Old Main Lawn, uh, and you can see a map at the, on the last page of your program. 
All students and families are invited to, um, to go there and participate in some light refreshments to start your feast day celebrations. It is quite a climb from the field house to Old Main, and so there are some golf carts that you can uh, take advantage of if needed. You can go straight out these doors or you can go to the top of the stairs um, outside of the field house and golf carts will meet you there. If you don't need a golf cart, uh, take the opportunity to get some steps and uh, save those carts for the people who really need them. Um, so please stand as we conclude. I'm the guy that stands between you and feast. So I will be brief. You did it. You did it. Congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. At times, I'm sure it wasn't easy. At times, I'm sure you wondered if you could do it. At times, I sure you wondered why you were doing it. But you did it. And today, we celebrate you and what God has done through you to bring you to this time, to this place, for this purpose. Take it in. Let it sink in. Let the gravity of the moment rest on your heart for just a moment. After Dr. Chop read the formula, I saw some of you wanted to throw your hat in the air. I know we're Presbyterians and that would kind of step outside a little bit, but if you want to, go ahead. Throw your hat in the air. <laughs> You'll find it again. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, let me pray for you. And then when I'm done, we will all uh, pray together uh, our Lord's Prayer. Now, we are a thee and thou kind of people and debts and debtors, um, but we don't mind if you're a trespasses prayer. We'll slow down a little bit and uh, let you catch up, and then uh, we'll finish strong together. And then I'll have a short blessing for you after that. So let's pray. Gracious God in the heavenly places, King of kings and Lord of lords, we know you are with us in this place. We can feel your presence. Join us in our celebration of these men and women. They have had quite a journey, but Lord, we know you walked the path with them. You guided them, Lord. Sometimes besides still water, but sometimes that water wasn't quite so still. But you were with them. Lord, today is a day of celebration, and we ask that you set your table before them and that they would feast on you today, tomorrow, and every day. Lord, give them green pastures where they can fill themselves, not so that they can be fat and comfortable, but so that they will be strong for your battle, so that they may be equipped to serve their neighbors wherever they may be, whoever those neighbors may be. Call them, Lord, into vocation for you in every corner of the world, serving you serving others in your name. Now, Lord, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his face towards you and give you peace. I promised my students I would end with the words that I use at the end of every class, which aligns quite well with our mission at Geneva, if you give it time and think about it. Go forth, do good, fight evil. You are dismissed.